SpaceX has provided a major launch update for the Starship, which could potentially see the craft enter active service as soon as this year. Currently, the company is hoping to send the Starship on its first orbital test flight ahead of its participation in the Artemis mission. Let's take a closer look. The Starship is intended to be a fully reusable launch vehicle that can carry both crew and cargo to a variety of destinations in space, including the Moon, Mars, and beyond. It is designed to be launched on top of the Super Heavy rocket, which is currently in development by SpaceX. The Super Heavy rocket will provide the necessary thrust to lift the Starship into orbit, while the Starship will be responsible for carrying payloads and crew to their destination. After the initial launch, the rocket is responsible for delivering the Starship crew capsule to orbit around the Earth. After it has done so, the booster will detach and steer itself towards a soft landing back at the launch pad. While this feat seemed almost impossible at first, SpaceX rockets have been doing it successfully for several years now. The next stage would involve the booster picking up a fuel tanker and carrying it into orbit as well. This fuel tanker will then be used to replenish the Starship for its voyage towards Mars. Once en route, the craft will deploy solar panels to harvest energy from the sun in an attempt to save precious onboard fuel for what will be an exciting and groundbreaking landing on the Red Planet. According to Musk's vision, these crafts and their crew will remain in Earth's orbit until a planetary alignment brings the Earth and Mars closer together. This is a window that opens once every 26 months. The long-term plan for SpaceX is to have many hundreds of spaceships waiting in orbit to depart en masse as part of the Mars Colonial Fleet. Perhaps the most important part for this entire plan to work is the reusability of the boosters. Musk's plan revolves around making sure that each spaceship is capable of being reused as much as possible. He states that there is no way to have a self-sustaining colony on Mars without reusability. It's a fundamental part of the plan. He also adds that if the wooden sailing ships from the old days were not reusable, the United States probably wouldn't have existed. SpaceX estimates that it will be able to use each of its rocket boosters a whopping thousand times, each tanker a hundred times, and each spaceship twelve times at least. The first missions are only estimated to carry around 100 people on each ship, but gradually that number is expected to increase to more than 200. According to these estimates, putting a million people on the surface of Mars could take anywhere from 40 to 100 years after the maiden voyage. The reusability of the rockets also means that once there, the crafts can then be used to return to Earth whenever needed. After a few uncrewed cargo supply missions have already landed on Mars, the human phase of colonization will finally be ready to begin. One of the biggest hurdles that stand in the way is the Red Planet's notoriously thin atmosphere. NASA had to be extra careful when landing their Curiosity rover on the planet, which weighed a mere 2,000 pounds and is a tiny fraction of the total payload that the manned missions will carry. This is one of the reasons why SpaceX continues to perfect its supersonic retro rocket technology so that they can gradually enter the Martian atmosphere and lower a very heavy spacecraft onto the surface using this reusable method. That's not all, though. Entering the atmosphere is another problem that needs attention. The craft needs to withstand a heated entry to the planet and perform a propulsive landing while still being capable of refueling and going back to Earth to start over again. The first few journeys would probably just drop off supplies and set up a propellant depot on the planet so return trips are possible when needed. After the supply runs are complete, humans can finally make their way to Mars. The first crew will need to rely on digging beneath the surface and dredging up buried ice. This will be used as a water source which will eventually power the entire colony. When the essential crews consisting of scientists and engineers have finally been set up, competition will start over the first few seats that can take willing individuals to the newly colonized planet. In the coming years, we can expect to see the Starship playing a key role in a variety of space-based missions, including crewed missions to the ISS, lunar missions, and even interplanetary travel. Its versatility and reliability will make it an invaluable tool for exploring the final frontier and unlocking the full potential of space travel. New reports state SpaceX fired up the engines of its latest Starship prototype in a dramatic test that also set some of the surrounding landscape ablaze. All six of the Raptor engines on the vehicle blazed briefly at Starbase, the company's South Texas facility. The static fire test marked another step toward launch for the Starship which is slated to conduct the program's first-ever orbital test flight in the coming months. 
The static fire lasted just a few seconds, but flames burned at Starbase for a while afterward. The test sparked a grass fire that brought the local fire department out as a safety precaution. Regulation remains the big uncertainty as Starship awaits its chance to make an orbital flight test. If all goes according to plan, the spaceship will make a round-the-world trip to splash down off the coast of Hawaii after 90 minutes, while the first stage of the Super Heavy rocket should return to Earth six minutes after launch in the Gulf of Mexico. However, the FAA has undertaken an environmental assessment of the Starship's mission, which delayed SpaceX's plans to attempt the flight. Even after the assessment is finished, there could be more certifications to consider. SpaceX's desire to fly an orbital mission with Starship prompted a lengthy environmental review by the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, and there are still several things to finish up. That FAA review, called a Programmatic Environmental Assessment, examined Starship activities at Starbase. The FAA concluded the assessment in June, following numerous delays from late 2021 due to the need to consult with other agencies and deal with public comments. The FAA said that SpaceX needs to take 75 actions to reduce its environmental impact on the area, despite SpaceX founder Elon Musk saying several times that Starship would be ready to go orbital soon. Musk recently said the target was November. It seems that SpaceX hasn't quite finished with those FAA action items, which could land the company in hot water with the authorities. History books may one day reflect on 2023 as the year of the lunar landers, with a launch schedule jammed full of robotic missions to Earth's nearest neighbor. The new space age came alive last year with the opening of the James Webb Space Telescope, the new super-sensitive observatory in the sky, and the maiden voyage of Artemis, NASA's Moon to Mars campaign that soon will return humans to deep space. Not to mention when the U.S. Space Agency intentionally moved an asteroid for the first time. Science journals are bound to be packed with discoveries as a result of those success stories, broadening our understanding of the universe. Though 2023 may have big shoes to fill in the cosmos, it promises to keep launch pads scorching hot. Many upcoming missions will set the stage for NASA's moon endeavors, shipping supplies and experiments to its surface ahead of astronauts' arrival in 2025 or later, as well as kickstarting a future lunar economy. That's largely thanks to NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program, established in 2018, to recruit the private sector to help deliver cargo to the moon. NASA selected commercial partner Intuitive Machines to send a lander to Schroeder's Valley, a region on the near side of the moon. During the IM-1 mission, the lander, called Nova C, will study how rocket exhaust and space weather affect the lunar surface. The mission is slated to launch on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral. The spacecraft, a six-sided cylinder standing on six legs, will carry five NASA instruments, among other unrelated commercial pieces of cargo, and demonstrate advanced landing technology. Fun fact, the lander will stay warm in frigid space like a lot of people do, with a coat. Rather than reinvent the wheel, Intuitive Machines partnered with Columbia Sportswear to use some of its insulation material on the spacecraft. Perhaps the biggest launch of the year will be the first orbital test flight for SpaceX a Starship. After a successful splashdown of the Orion spacecraft in the Pacific Ocean, NASA Administrator and former Senator Bill Nelson shared that his agency plans to go to Mars by the end of 2030. Senator Nelson struck an upbeat tone after NASA had a great Artemis One mission, and the remarks were made during a post-splashdown press conference in which he also shared details for SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander. The event was attended by several agency officials, including Michael Serafin, NASA's Artemis One mission manager, who shared his final thoughts on Orion's performance as it entered the Earth at breakneck speeds for a successful landing. Throughout its journey to the moon and back, Orion performed better than NASA engineers had initially expected. The spacecraft's power generation, done through solar panels, generated more power than expected. As part of the mission, NASA added additional test objectives to stress the vehicle and learn more about its performance for future missions. The next Artemis mission will involve a crew, and not only will NASA use the data for the next mission, but it will also make changes to the ship. Administrator Nelson also shared crucial details about SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander. This is currently the only vehicle that has been chosen by NASA to land humans on the moon as part of the Artemis program. He announced that SpaceX plans to do an uncrewed landing in 2023 and then to do the crewed landing in late 2024.
Reports from NASA suggest that the massive Starship vehicle could launch on its first ever orbital test flight any day now. The agency has a stake in Starship's progress. NASA picked the giant rocket as the first crewed lunar lander for its Artemis program of moon exploration. If all goes according to the current plan, a Starship will put boots down near the moon's south pole in 2025 or 2026 on the Artemis 3 mission. No Starship prototype has taken flight since May 2021, and all of its jaunts so far have reached a maximum altitude of just six miles or so. However, observers have now noted that SpaceX has begun pre-launch testing of the craft by simulating its engines for an upcoming flight. SpaceX's desire to fly an orbital mission with Starship prompted a lengthy environmental review by the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, and there are still several things to finish up. The coming mission aims to heft a prototype 165-foot-tall Starship vehicle into orbit atop a super-heavy booster that has a height of 230 feet. The stacked hardware is the tallest rocket system ever. SpaceX has already conducted several static fire tests in 2022 to get Starship ready for the approximately 90-minute mission that, if successful, would see the spacecraft splash down off the coast of Hawaii. It's unclear how much prep work remains before SpaceX is ready to launch the mission, however. SpaceX's human landing system contract with NASA requires several successful spaceflight tests before Starship will be authorized to put astronauts on the moon. NASA is also seeking a second vendor for crewed Artemis landing missions, but more options won't be ready until Artemis 5 at the earliest, putting SpaceX in line for landings on Artemis 3 and Artemis 4 in about 2025 and 2027, depending on how earlier missions go. If you like this video, you may also be interested in this one, which talks about SpaceX's launch of Starlink V2. Do you think the Starship is the right craft for the Artemis mission? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.